Welcome to Unit 2. Unit 2 is called the First Americans. In this unit, we will look at how humans arrived here in the Americas. The Americas are made up of North America, Central America, and South America. Thir thousands of years ago, humans did not live in the Americas. It was during the last Ice Age that humans began migrating into and living in the Americas. In this unit, we will look at the last Ice Age and what happened that allowed humans to move into the Americas. Now, turn to page four in your student packet. The first thing we're going to look at is the last ice age. An ice age is a period of time when glaciers covered many parts of the northern hemisphere. It was between 20,000 and 40,000 years ago that the earth experienced its last ice age. During this period of time, glaciers covered a large part of the northern hemisphere. If you look at the map on the left, the northern hemisphere is the area north of the equator. So during the last ice age, glaciers covered a large part of North America, Europe, and Northern Asia. Now, in a glacier is a huge sheet of ice. Glaciers are basically frozen water. So where did the water come from to form the glaciers? Well, the water came from rivers and lakes, ponds, places like that. But for the most part, the water came from the Earth's oceans the Pacific Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, and the Arctic Ocean. And as the glaciers grew in size, the ocean level began to fall. So as the glaciers got bigger and bigger, the, the level of the oceans went down. The water went down so much that parts of the seafloor became exposed. If you look at the map on the left, right, I'm sorry, the right here, you can see Asia and North America. If you look closely, right in between Asia and North America, there's a narrow strip of water called the Bering Strait. During the Ice Age, this water that separated Asia from North America disappeared. What happened was, because of the glaciers, the water level in the oceans went down. It went down so much that the land in this area, that is today the Bering Strait, the Bering Sea, was exposed. So you could see the land. So during the Ice Age, Asia was connected to North America. You could walk from Asia across into North America because the water had gone down. This land that became exposed is known as Beringia. It's also known as the land bridge. I mean, think about what a bridge does. It connects two places. So this land served as a bridge. It connected Asia to North America. So it's called the land bridge. On this map, Siberia to the left is in Asia. Alaska is in North America. So this is Asia and this is North America. And right in between is the Bering Strait, which today is a body of water that separates Asia from North America. During the last ice age, the water that covers the Bering Strait disappeared. The glaciers caused the Earth's oceans to drop and this exposed land. So if you look at this map, the lighter shade of brown is the land that was exposed when the water went down. This is what's called Beringia, or the land bridge, which connected Asia to North America. Now, how did humans get to the Americas? How did they get here? It was during the last ice age that humans began moving out of Asia and into North America. What caused them to move? Well, let's take a look at Asia. Over in Asia, because of the glaciers, water dried up. The water in lakes, ponds, rivers disappeared because it was being frozen and added to the glaciers. As the water disappeared, the land dried up. When the land dried up, plants began to die. When the plants died, animals could not find food. So at that point, animals had two choices. They could either stay where they were and die, or they could leave and search for food. So, during the Ice Age, animals began migrating out of Asia. Some went to Europe, some went down towards Africa, and others came up to the north and crossed over this land bridge out of Asia and into North America. So that's how the animals started to get into North America. What about the humans? Well, over in Asia, humans lived as nomads. 
A nomad is a person or group of people who move from place to place in search of food. So if you're a nomad, you don't, you can't grow your own food. These early people did not know how to farm. And back then they didn't have grocery stores. So the only way they could get food was to go out and gather food from plants like vegetables and fruits or go hunt animals. In Asia, during the Ice Age, plants were dying. The plants were dying because the water was drying up. So humans could not get food from plants. So that left the animals. But what were the animals doing? The animals were leaving Asia. They were migrating out of Asia to search for food. So as the animals began to leave Asia, early humans began to leave Asia. And some of these humans, just like the animals, some of these humans came across out of Asia, across the land bridge, into North America. And that's how early humans arrived here in the Americas. Now, what did they do when they came to the Americas? If you look at the large map here, the red lines indicate the tra uh, tra I'm sorry, the travel routes that these early people took. Over time, these early humans spread out throughout North America. They even traveled further into Central America and further into South America. Now, this process did not happen overnight. It wasn't like one year they arrive in North America and the next year they're all the way down in South America. This process took thousands of years to happen. Now, these early people were what we would call Stone Age people. They lived during a time when stone was what they used for things like tools and weapons. Um, another name that maybe you're more familiar with is these are the cavemen. They lived in caves when they could because you didn't have to build a cave. Um, it was there. It was natural. And if you could find a cave, um, it was easy to, to move into. Over time, these early Americans, these first Americans, would become known as the Native Americans. Groups like the Aztecs, the Incas, the Iroquois, the Pueblos, and other groups of Native Americans. Early humans lived during a period of time known as prehistory. Prehistory is the period of time before humans learned to write. Early humans did not know how to write, therefore they left no written records. No written records such as books or journals or diaries, letters, newspaper articles. Since early humans did not know how to write, archaeologists and historians have to rely on artifacts to learn about these early humans. Um, what is an archaeologist? An archaeologist is a scientist who searches for and studies artifacts in order to learn how early people lived. If you look at the picture on the top here, the person that's digging in the ground is an archaeologist. An archaeologist is a person who goes out into the field, they search for places where early people may have lived, and then they, dig thing, they try to dig things up from the ground to learn how they lived. Probably the most famous archaeologist that you know is the movie character Indiana Jones. Even though he's not real, that's kind of what archaeologists do. They go out, they search for where early people lived, and they, dig th they try to find things in the ground that they can use to learn about these early people. When they find things in the ground, these things are called artifacts. An artifact is an object made by humans, such as tools, weapons, pottery, jewelry, clothing, and then they leave them behind. Um, maybe they drop them and they forget about them. Um, they, something breaks, like a, a potter, piece of pottery breaks and they just leave it. Or maybe people are buried with these items. If you look at the picture on the bottom here, this is a grave site showing the bodies of, it looks like, two adults and a child. Now, in this grave site were probably art, items like clothes and tools and pieces of jewelry that these people would have made and worn. So anything that's found in this grave site is what would be known as an artifact. And archaeologists would use those artifacts to help learn about those early people. Knowledge and culture was passed on through oral history. Early humans did not know how to write. So if they're trying to teach their children about their, their culture or their history, how do they teach them? They didn't have textbooks. They didn't have the internet. What they did do was they used what's known as oral history. Oral history is the passing on of a person or a group's history through the telling of stories 
and the singing of songs. Think about a family holiday that you have, Christmas or Thanksgiving, when your family gets together. When, if you sit down with grandma or grandpa and you ask them stories about their younger life, what do they do? They tell you a story about what it was like when they grew up. That's oral history. They're sharing their history by telling you a story. This is a very important way for these early people to pass on their culture. Culture is the way of life for a group of people. It's the way people live. Okay, that finishes the lecture video for this part. At this time, you need to go to the Moodle website and you need to take the quick check quiz for the First Americans lecture video part one. Good luck, have a good night, and we'll see you in class. Bye-bye.